my guest is, is here. The person that I've been waiting for is none other than Mumbi. The hey. poet. How are you doing? I'm good. Welcome. Asante sana. Karibu, karibu sana. Just move closer to the to the microphone. I, I want to hear more of you. You have a beautiful voice. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So you are um, a spoken word artist. Yes. You are a writer. Yes. Um, what else am I forgetting? Um, curator. Uh, I want to know about that. <laughs> um, so curator, I've been hosting um, open mic poetry events okay. in Nairobi since 2018, I think. Yeah. Oh, so, so I'm an event curator as well. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Yes. Okay, so what did I forget? What did I miss? Because I don't want to miss anything. Hmm, performing spoken word poets, yes. um, writer, self-published author, blogger event curator law school graduates oh yeah yes you are yes <laughs> <laughs> i mean and and that really got me thinking because i was reading about i was reading your blog yesterday mm -hmm. and you have this brilliant piece that we're going to talk about in a few okay but you you did law yes i studied law you studied law yes but now you're a poet yes hey <laughs> tell me about that how the, how how was that transition and also what did your parents think about it? So I think I was starting poetry around the same time when I was in first year. Okay. So they all, they both happened at the same time. Because I remember like there were times when I was like in first year or second year, like I would have a show at the same time. I have a slam competition okay. at the same time i have an exam at the same time like i have to like manage classes and assignments so like at the beginning of uni yeah i really struggled with like balancing the two yeah but by the time i think i was graduating from uni i yeah. think poetry had already like i was already solidifying myself as a poet yeah so those Four years were very interesting. So you me. didn't really you um so you 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 graduated with a degree in uh, in law in law yes but then you didn't pursue it career wise no I didn't pursue like Kenya School of Law yeah um because at the time I think I took some time to just see how far this poetry thing can go because at the time by the time I was graduating that's where like. I was a poet, like everyone knew me as a poet. Yeah. So I needed to take time to like um, travel for events, focus on curating shows, focus on writing. Mm. Yeah. So not to say that I wouldn't pursue law as a career, just it's not a right now thing. Okay. Yeah. Why poetry? What drew you into that? Um, I don't know. I think I always used to write. Like I always used to just have a passion for writing and storytelling. Um, and so when I was in high school, I think it started in high school. And then when I left high school, now when I was getting into uni, I found open mic events that were happening. Okay. So like Kwani open mic, um, poetry after lunch used to happen at the National Theatre. So I started going for those events. Yeah. I just I think at that time I only had like one one or two poems that I had written. So every time I was going, I was performing my poems, yeah. listening to other people who are doing the same thing that I was doing. Because when I was in high school, I didn't think like there were other people who are doing the same mm. thing that I was doing. But now finding that community of people who are doing the same thing I was doing, like I was so inspired wrote more pieces um i'm i always say i'm a product of open mic events like all the open mic shows i went for are really like what helped me grow because yeah. then they're the same shows that would call me back and be like can you be our featured poet for the next open mic or can you headline and then that's when i knew I have something so you developed the interest so you, you literally just started writing yeah i just started writing um so my first like po my first time being in a poetry space was in high school we used to have like inter-school like competitions yeah and so but i would never like participate because my writing was always for me um but then there was a category that was original composition and the person from my school who was supposed to compete couldn't because she had an exam so my english teacher signed me up um to take her place mm. 
So, and the the competition was the next day. And I'm being told today that by they go write something, tomorrow yeah. we're going for the competition. So I remember I went home and I was like, how how do I write a yeah. poem to go and recite in front of people? Because I had never like performed or recited anything yes. in front of anyone. So I went home. I think that time I must have been like 16, 17. I wrote a poem, I think like about a boy in my class or something. <laughs> it was called A Stained Wedding Dress. Um, oh. And then the next day we went for the competition. And I remember I was disqualified. Oh, why? Yeah, because you had to like print out the poem. And then so when you go for the competition for that specific category, you yeah. submit the poem you've written to the judges beforehand so that when you're performing they like can read as you perform so they saw the structure of my poem and they're like this isn't like poetry exactly because it yes. didn't look like the the ideal structure exactly yeah. it looked like a story i was just telling a story that the last words just happened to rhyme yeah. <laughs> so they were like this i don't know what this is but it's not a poem so i was disqualified um but i think i still performed it again like at an assembly in school okay. and then i think i wrote my second poem also still in school performed it at assembly again and then now when i finished high school one day i remember i just went to on facebook and i was like poetry events in nairobi mm. and i found kwani open mic went and performed that there found poetry after lunch and then performed that there yeah wrote more poems like that i remember that must have been like 2016 17 2017 november yeah i was the headlining act at kwani open mic okay after performing there for like just a few months so that was really crazy really crazy yeah i want to know um uh, parents because mm -hmm. you know we, we have grown up in this culture mm -hmm. and our parents deem certain uh, um, careers mm -hmm. or rather certain choices that we make they're like oh you're not gonna feed off of that mm -hmm. or you can make it what what did your uh what did your parents think when you said i want to be a poet full time so i don't think it ever happened that i said i want to be a poet full time mm -hmm. it was just something that i was exploring because okay. i remember my mom is the one who even took me for kwani open mic the first time because i was like a teenager and i told her like um i've been writing like these poems i just want like to go for to a platform to yeah. just share it with other people and i remember my mom took me the first time so i was also introducing her to this creative space World, yes which she also liked um so even like the the when i kept going and when i told her like things were happening like i'm the headlining act i remember in Great. 2018 i went to dar es salaam for the first time to actually teach a poetry workshop wow. so this whole time i think my mom was also like understanding this space as i was yes. And it was also just interesting for her to see. And like, you know, even when I started, when I realized that this is something that you can make money from, mm. she was also realizing that, like, oh, like. This and is. she was supportive. And she was support very supportive. All right. I'm mm -hmm. talking to Mumbi, the poet. And of course, this is Pi FM 94.4. And uh, if you want to talk to her or if you want to talk to us, 0719012600 is the number to call. When we come back, Mumbi is going to be performing one of her amazing pieces. I cannot wait for you to listen to it. Spice. With Mumbi, the poet. And right now, it's about that time. And she's performing one of my favorite pieces. And it's called Kilifi. There you go, darling. So... I love you so much that I never want to see you again. That's one hell of an emotion. Me and the ocean have one thing in common. We're always in motion. I forgot where I end and you begin. You have to believe me. I love you so much that I had to run from Nairobi to Kilifi. I want to go home. But I love you so much that I never want to see you again. So then that means I must stay here in Kilifi. 
That means I must get accustomed to the feeling of sand and water in my feet beneath me. That means I must start calling cashews korosho, sikusikia la mzazi sasa niko kilifi na kunywa mnazi. Maybe I will take a lover in Kilifi to forget you. Maybe I will write poetry about our rendezvous. He will call me Rukia because that's what I do. I mean, how is life short when it's the longest thing you do? I love you so much that I never want to see you again. That's one hell of an emotion. Me and the ocean have one thing in common. We're always in motion. Ah. Ah. You give me chills. <laughs> <laughs> you give me chills. It's so beautiful. Thank you. Let's talk about Kilifi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Wh whose story is that? No, so um this poem I wrote it just like for I mean even you um have you ever been in a position where like you love someone so much that you never want to see them again? Honey. Uh, <laughs> love is a drag yeah love is a drag you know i know that every time i see this person mm -hmm. uh, the, the word is they are the weakness yeah they are my weakness yeah but then they're not good for me yeah so you want to be like i i love you but like from the other side of the world <laughs> let me love you from afar <laughs> exactly so that's just what that poem is about um i spent a lot of time um in kilifi towards the end of last year yeah. and everyone that i was meeting was like running away from something in nairobi Ooh. and i think i mean me too if i if i if i'm being if, honest if you're being honest <laughs> i want you to be honest because um um before you answer this i'm, I'm gonna ask you mm -hmm. what when you write mm -hmm. you write from personal experiences right yeah I, right. I i write best when i'm writing something i know okay yeah so is kilifi a personal experience yeah it is yeah what happened <laughs> <laughs> no it's just it's just that like just wanting to be as far away from this person or this situation yeah. as possible but i think for me what i don't say in the poem is that in the end you realize that if you're running away from something that's in your mind you'll never really get far away enough from it you know like putting Ooh. like physical distance between you and something that will still be on your mind no matter where you go yeah at the end of the day doesn't serve any good because we never really forget do we yeah so now you're just it's still bothering you but on the other side yeah of the world <laughs> so that, that that's true i mean that's true because i say I, the people in my life that i still think about yeah. that i still remember mm -hmm. Despite the fact that we haven't talked for years, mm -hmm. you know, but I still remember them. They're close to my heart. Yeah. And I think that Kilifi just literally spoke all about it. Yeah. Um, does poetry help you heal? Mm, I would say with time, yeah. Because in the moment, like, so say if I'm writing about like a heartbreak or something. And so it's a poem that I have to keep performing um which obviously like reminds me of like why i wrote it yeah. i think with time it does but when i first started writing i so i used to write just like for me like i just used to keep my poetry for me until i now became a performing artist mm. and then now it was like my vulnerability is now I used to fear that like my vulnerability would be performative because now that's like what people expect. Yes. You know, yeah. for oh this is what she does. She's she'll come and she'll tell us all about yes. her pain and you know. Yeah. Um but I realized that it's not performative because that's just like who I am. That's my truth. That's yeah. my story. And there are people who will always relate whether they see it or not um and if my poetry can help other people heal yeah then i mean that's what art is and i think what really helps is um you know the de uh, when you deliver mm -hmm. how you deliver it really really matters so does one really need to be vulnerable to be a poet do you have to really dig deep like be vulnerable let me know you you know <laughs> yeah 
No, for me personally, the art that I enjoy the most is the art that you feel like this person dug deep into the trenches of their soul to write this poem or this song or to paint this painting like the art that i enjoy yeah. personally has just like a story or a meaning behind it um so for me i think it depends on like what people enjoy but personally for me i would say you definitely have to be willing to be vulnerable and strip down like the walls parts of you yeah is that is, is that scary it is because not everybody knows your business <laughs> <laughs> i remember i once performed a poem and uh this is like in my early days of performing and i had written it about this guy um who was also an artist so he was also at the show and I, when i got off stage he told me like please never write another poem about me Ooh. <laughs> Again, yeah. because like I think it made him feel like some type of way, like, like you exposed damn, like him. That, yeah, exactly. Oh, um, so that was interesting. <laughs> so does that really limit you? I, I mean, because if you're writing from experiences, that means um, I'm, I'm going to give you an example. If I'm on air, I'm on radio. Mm. I can talk about my relationships. I can mm. talk about my friendships. You yeah. know. So um, similar to you, you talk about your experiences. Mm. Do you have to? call these people and tell them that I'm going to be talking about this or I'm going to be writing a piece about you? Not necessarily because that's just my my perspective and my story. And I don't think anyone can limit me yeah. or tell me how to tell my story. Yeah. Um, but it is interesting mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when they hear them. But yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> no one told you to do that to me exactly so you're <laughs> gonna speak your truth exactly ah it's interesting <laughs> i mean what what do you love most about uh about poetry oh what i love most about poetry or about being a poet or both actually both about being a poet and about poetry about poetry i think just that it's an avenue to like express myself um i used to say that i feel like i'm the personification of poetry and not a poet like i feel like everything i do i the way i think the way i talk is just poetry because okay. i feel like everything in its core it's it's poetry it's creating it's yeah. um it's just how i express god i think let me say it like that that's true yeah what do i love about being a poet i think just like the spaces i've been able to be in i feel like poetry is just one of those art forms that can exist in like so many different spaces yeah um just the shows I've been able to perform at, the people I've been able to meet, the stories I've been able to hear, the people who have heard my story. I think just that, like, yeah, being able to be in, like, so many different spaces. Okay, and you, yeah. you spoke about um, Open Mic. Yes. And how you started. Mm -hmm. Is that very important um, to someone who wants to be a poet? Yeah, because I can't even tell you the number of like messages and DMs I get from people who are always saying, I I write poetry, how do I like follow in your footsteps yes. or how do I get to where you are? And like sometimes I feel like so not like helpless, but like because there's no formula mm. or at least for me there was never any formula if you would have told me in 2016 that like this is where i'd be and these are all the things that i would have done with my poetry yeah that it would have sounded crazy to me but like for me the only thing i tell people is like I was so consistent with like my performances at open mic yeah. to the point I would go to like an open mic show just to listen to the poetry but they would always tell me you cannot be here and you're not performing because if your art is good like the people will demand it from you yeah um so I would go to a show and my name is already signed up for open mic okay and I would be like, <laughs> yeah, because they want it. Because yeah. they want it. You so know? now that even made them be like, no, you have to headline, you have to feature. Yeah. Um, so I think just like for anyone who's starting out, 
just for me that's what i did i was just so consistent with open mics any event i saw open mic i'm there i'm performing mm. if one new person listens to my poem good if a hundred new people listen to my poem it's good okay yeah. so one can be a good writer mm -hmm. um you can be a good writer mm -hmm. you, you you write poetry right mm -hmm. but you're not a good performer mm -hmm. what do they do I I don't know that's not actually that's not something I ever struggled with to yeah. be honest yeah and even so I remember before the first time I ever performed like um at an assembly in school I had never like spoken on a microphone before and I remember like being like 15 16 and being like wow I would like one day want to speak on a microphone mm. and then the first time I ever spoke on a microphone was when I was performing a poem in front of the whole school which was like so crazy to me yeah so I don't know I think for me it just came like naturally it was just natural yeah but it depends do they want to perform okay. or because they're poets who are just page poets who just write and who have no interest in performing in performing that's true but if you do have an interest in performing then just practice practice makes perfect like perform to whoever will listen okay yeah all right then spice fm and i'm talking to mumbi the poet if you want to talk to us our whatsapp number is zero one one zero two eight eight one six two spice is the sunday spice now your content you speak about things that people find it hard to talk about mm -hmm. you are expressive yeah i cannot say all of it here because the content <laughs> is erotic <laughs> i'm just gonna leave it at that you need to go check out her social media it's mumbi at mumbi poetry at mumbi poetry yes and just listen yeah, she's going to make you shiver. Kidogo too. Kidogo too. But now, one of my favorite pieces has to be, my other favorite piece mm -hmm. has to be The Good Woman. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it really spoke to me. Okay. So let's hear that. <laughs> okay. So the first thing you should know about me is I'm not a good woman. So I've never asked for a good man. But me and God, we have this arrangement. He sends me men that will tell me lies. Break my heart maybe one or two times. And in return, I summarize the memory in 32 lines. I get it. Maybe he doesn't send me these men because they are right. But because he knows it's the only way he could get me to write. So it's no wonder I'm stuck here with a guy like you who can turn me into another girl he's been through. Baby, please tell me it's not true. But now you have me praying to God that I walk away from this before you. That way you won't play me. But see, no one's mastered this craft like I have. But you managed to talk me out of my senses, so you must be a better poet than I am. See, I was trying to be something like a shoulder you can lean on. Because my mama raised me to be more than just a pillow you can sleep on. But we keep on. And somewhere in the back of your mind, I know you hear the universe saying, keep her. But between me and him, I'm not sure who could go deeper. But baby, you're new to this. And trust me. I've been doing this. Oh, wow. I am, um, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You know, you, you have, uh, I, I felt like when I listened to that, I was like, okay, I've been here. Mm -hmm. And not just me. I feel like so many women have also been in that space. Yeah. And you wrote this piece because you're going, th when, when you were going through a heartbreak. Yeah. Tell me. <laughs> i want to know tell me about it what happened no it's just like you know so many times when you go through like um heartbreak so like you feel like you have bad luck in love and you're like okay am i the problem so that was just like a space i was in yeah. where i was like you know what i'm not a good woman so maybe that's why like you know Mm. I've never had a good man. I've never asked for a good man. Because I felt like I was just being used for content. Like, I was writing so many poems yeah. about, like, um, guys and heartbreak. And, heartbreaks, and yeah. I was like, oh, am I just going through this so that I can churn out these poems? So that's Ooh. why I said... Um, God doesn't send me these men because they're right or because he knows it's the only way he, he could get me to write. 
Um, yeah, so that's just all the space I was in. Like, am I just being used as a lesson for other people? <laughs> like, oh. I feel like I've written enough heartbreak poems. I'm ready to write love poems. That is so deep. <laughs> that is so deep because you said that are you just writing this this pieces? Yeah. Um, are you going through this experience so that you may write this pieces? Yeah, or is there like a bigger picture? Yeah. Okay. My next question is... Mm-hmm. Did you find someone who loved you better? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think my perspective changed. Yeah, I guess. Um, so then I started looking at the, I started looking at it from a different way, and just like now writing about the lessons rather than questioning me okay. myself, because I, I, I realized that how people treat you is rarely ever your fault. Um, yeah. yeah 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 so then i I stopped looking at myself as the problem and then now the poems i wrote after that i think were better in the sense that now i was writing about um i was writing about me i was no longer writing about About this person yeah i was no longer writing the poems for them it was now about me because you're giving so much power to them exactly but you know that's also a little bit conflicting because Mm -hmm. you are a creator you're creative yeah yeah and you write from um good and bad experiences Mm -hmm. so you you going through bad experiences Mm -hmm. that's something that you can really channel out of yeah i mean we, we listened to adele and she had a lot of heartbreak yeah. songs you know <laughs> and it built her yeah. a lot yeah so i feel like was that a conflict you choosing that i'm not gonna write this i'm not doing this anymore mm, not really i think what changed is how am i doing it okay yeah because i think yeah because it's not like oh woe is me anymore it's yeah. this happened but this happened um so that i can learn this or like in future these are the red flags or just and also to like educate i think you know other people like these are the the signs that i failed to see Mm -hmm. or if you're in if your situation sounds like this then you should probably run um (laughs) (laughs) definitely you should probably run but do we ever we don't because i mean <laughs> hindsight is is 2020 20. when you're in the moment it's so hard to see the the bigger picture yeah yeah that's true so i was going through your blog mm-hmm. you have a beautiful website thank you and um um as, as i was going through your blog there was this article mm-hmm. and uh it's called sex work mm-hmm. is work yes i got it right yeah yes sex work is work yes and um You talked about how the society pretends Mm. when it comes to sex workers. Mm. I just want you to articulate that again here. Okay. So um, when I was in law school to, you know, the final semester was we're writing our dissertations. Yeah. So the topic that I chose to write about in my dissertation was commercial sex work in Kenya. And I called it the pretentious moral bubble because i was questioning the criminalization of sex work mm. from uh we always say that it's a it's a moral thing like yeah. something is illegal because we think it's immoral so i was just questioning you know who is so high up the moral ladder to say that this is immoral and therefore illegal yeah. um and i was just challenging i was just like raising questions on how the anti prostitution laws in kenya actually cause more problems yeah. than they do solutions because now you're just um your commercial sex workers don't have any avenues of redress if you're already criminalizing what they're doing at law yeah. when i mean this is we can't pretend like this is something that doesn't happen no, it happens yeah it does and so just some of the the questions i was raising was that a lot of times people will say that it's immoral because prostitution is self debasement for profit and i was like well that just sounds like every other employment position to me yeah um and just like looking at the origins of it and just what the law says about and just you know just telling people that sex work is work and not only work but it is dignified work and i think something that caught my attention was when you said that okay fine there's prostitution it's happening Mm -hmm. and so it's illegal right Mm -hmm. but then we find the person 
who's performing this act, mm-hmm. uh, the act of prostitution, mm-hmm. I'm not doing it on my own. There's someone. There's yeah. someone who's paying for it. Yeah. But I'm the person who'll be faulted for it. Yeah, exactly. Not the person who's paying for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in the if you look at it from a feminist point of view, is the definition of prostitution is selling sex. So there's only one party who is defined in the definition. Your prostitution does not include the person who is paying for sex. Yeah. So if the English definition itself does not include the person who is paying, mm. neither will the punishment. That's true. Yeah. I love that piece. You need to go check out um, that piece on her blog. Yes. What's your greatest achievement, dear? Oh, my greatest achievement... I would say last year, 2021, I was interviewed on CNN. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, which was amazing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, And just like I've worked and written for just like so many like big organizations. Um, Sometime end of last year, I performed and moderated a session for the World Health Organization in partnership with UNICEF. Okay. Um, I've worked with organizations about like um, dealing with um, healthcare for mothers, children, and adolescents. Mm-hmm. I just like the fact that there are so many like um, big like organizations with platforms that have seen my work and said that we want you to be the bearer of this message. Yeah. I think that was just amazing. Because I used to look at myself like, me? Why would you why w- Yeah, me? why me? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. For a long time, I would like, you want to interview me on CNN? Like, how come? Me? Exactly. Yeah. So I, I, I think it's just like opened my eyes to, like people see the, power and people see the vision and so i should also see myself like okay. that yeah. all right sunny spice this is um uh, spice affair my name is miriam angel i'm here with mumbi the poet and of course we're talking about her work her pieces and everything about her life so if you want to talk to us you know what to do spice Miriam Angel Nico karibu kutoka hapa but before i do that i'm still here with mumbi the poet and um you have a poetry book. Yes. And it's called When I Learned How to Work. Mm-hmm. And of course, it, it's a con- it, it consists of 17 other yes. um, uh, poems. poems yeah. Right? How did you go about publishing that? So I started self-publishing the book, I think, in beginning of 2020. Because that's just when the pandemic had started to hit. And so all the poetry events that I had planned for the year, obviously, I couldn't do. So I was just thinking of how else can I package my poetry for people. And I think that's where the idea came from to start um, to just write a book. So self-publishing, it took me... I think like a month to write the poems and then the actual like putting together the book took me about like four months because there was so much research that had to go into it. I knew absolutely nothing about self-publishing a book. Yeah. Um, And a lot of like publishing, um, publishing uh, organizations or companies. Yes. um, Don't really, because my book is very small. Um, it's like about like 40 pages. So I didn't think publishing houses would like take me seriously <laughs> to just tell them I have 17 books uh-huh. and I want to write a book. Yeah. Um, so I decided to self-publish. So I I did so much research. I was on the internet every day. How to self-publish. The layouts of the book. Yeah. The copyright certificates that you need. The ISBN numbers. How to make oh, wow. a book cover. I did all of that myself in four months. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then I had a book. 
And so I did everything myself. I always say if I had a printer at home, I would have printed it myself. <laughs> the printing is the only thing I outsourced yeah. because even the cover, everything, I did it that myself. That was all you. Yeah. And oh. at the time, it was the same time when I was starting my website. Yeah. Because um, I just needed another way for people to consume my my work. So I think my first blog post on my website was how not to self-publish a book. So if people are interested, they can actually read that blog That's post. That's brilliant because then you've given, you've you've gone through it. Yeah. And so you're saying the do's and don'ts. Yeah, this is what not to do. Yeah. Yeah. So if anyone is interested, um, mumbimacharya.com, my first blog post, if you want to read about exactly like the nitty gritties of how I published my book, yeah. that I wrote about it extensively on my website. Interesting. Yeah. I love that. So you you have a lot of pieces, but there has to be that one piece that you poured your soul into which is it mm, i think it always changes okay it always changes um right now it must be so there's a poem i have called religious tears which i don't even perform i don't think i've ever like performed it because oh. this is one of those poems that just it's just very like close close to your heart to my heart yeah so i don't think i've I, i'm yet to like perform it live yeah so i think that's that currently that would be the one that i feel like i've poured everything everything into yeah and i, I listened to a bit of it it's it's on your it's social on my instagram yeah, yeah it's yeah. on your instagram and yeah. it's beautiful thank you okay so right now where can people uh find you where do you perform um, so I've been hosting um, open mic events um, at a bookshop in Lovington. It's called Cheche Bookshop. Mm -hmm. um, I did one in January, February. I kind of fell off a bit in March and April, so I haven't had one. Hopefully I'll have one in May. Mm -hmm. um, but if anyone would just like to know where I'm performing next, they can follow me on my socials at Mumbi Poetry on all platforms. Yeah. If I don't have like a poetry poetry show um for an extended period of time i always like post new poems for people to listen to um but that's where they can find where i perform okay yeah so Mombi, it's been beautiful having you but i'm not gonna let you go mm -hmm. uh without performing one more piece okay and um let me see if i can introduce this better <laughs> mm -hmm. um okay so Mombi is performing to the sun I might have one day. Yes. <laughs> Take the stage, darling. <laughs> so, to the sun that I might have one day. I love you already. But you are not the first boy who I've had to raise. You're not the first boy who I've had to teach right from wrong. And you are certainly not the first boy who I've had to teach how to approach a woman. See, my job is to ensure that before I send you out into this world that you are right within and that you know how to respect people from their head to their feet and everything in between. And when they ask you who raised you, tell them that you walk with the confidence of a king because your mother praised you. And when you learn how to talk, may everything that comes out of your mouth be better than silence. May you learn how to hold back and swallow any rude comments, misogynistic jokes, lies. May they rot in your throat so that they never see the light of day. And when you learn how to walk, may you learn to walk with your mother's pride. May you learn to step with her mother's stride. And if I have to promise you one thing, I promise you this. I promise that every day I will take my pen and my paper and I will sketch you in all of my books and I will open them up to look at you whenever I forget how God looks. Wow, Wendy. Ah, you have graced us with your presence mm -hmm. and this was very, very beautiful. I mean, you need to follow Mumbi. If you love poetry, if you love art, if you love culture, you mm -hmm. know, you need to follow because in on her page you're gonna find a lot of things that you could actually explore. Yeah. All right. Thank you, babe. Welcome, Olis. Thank Spice you. FM. Spice.